It's when I look fun. <laughs> anyway, I'd just like to say uh, it's a pleasure to be here and it's a pleasure to represent <laughs> Prince Nello, talk about his work and talk about the legacy that he's going to leave behind. Um, first of all, I'll just give you a little bit of insight to myself. I'm from Birmingham. I'm down to earth like anybody else. <laughs> um, I have a, a skill which I discovered that I had when I was five years old. Because I realised I had a condition. Well, I didn't realise at the time. I have a condition called autism, which I still have to this very day. You may not detect it, but, but I do have it. But I think that that contributed to me having the skills that I have. Now, I don't want to go on too much about me because the evening isn't all about me, it's about Mr. Nello himself, but I will explain exactly what I've achieved throughout my life. When I was very young, at school it wasn't very, it was hard to me. I wasn't in a good place because I, I couldn't read very well, I couldn't express myself academically. So the school teachers would always use me as an example of failure. I was born 1957, I'm now 62 years old, and I'll be 63 this year, <laughs> which I don't mind, because <laughs> I remember so many things from the 60s. I remember when the music was a lot better than what it is now, because <laughs> I mean, if you go back to the 60s and 70s, you know, we, we had some good musicians and good songwriters. And back then there was no technology, so, you know, there was no computers, so, you know, you had to be good at something. So while I was at school, I was humiliated quite a few times by the teacher because not being able to spell, not being able to write. It was hard, very hard. I remember one of the teachers said to me that I'm the consequence of failure because I couldn't spell. She used to take me in front of the class and she used to have this voice that sounded like an establishment from Bert's expectation. And don't see that thought? She used to say, let me see if I can impersonate her. She used to say, you are the consequence of failure, so therefore you shall be exhibited as failure. Children, could I have your attention? So the kids would, yes, we do that. And I'd be standing at the front of the class, here, imagining you're all pupils. Then she would say, she'd open my exercise book up and say, this is what happens when you don't listen to the teacher, you become Willard. And, and Willard is not what to become. But they didn't realise what was about to emerge, you see. You see? So there I was, standing there, looking around and feeling lost because I couldn't spell my name. So, then my body was at school, my mind wasn't. So I decided not to speak anymore, so I never spoke, I never spoke at all. Because I kept thinking, because I was told that my life is going nowhere, I might as well not speak. So I didn't say nothing, because they made me feel like nothing, so I might as well give them nothing. So I never said anything. Then she'd take me around the school. Same thing again. Could I have your attention, children? Here we have failure. This is what happens if you don't listen to the teacher. Could you spell your name on the blackboard? What I used to do is just draw a little man on the board. That was it. And that was me. So, that was it. So one day I just said to myself, I was at school one day and I said, I can't take this anymore. Being a young kid, age five, I can't take this no more. You'd be in the playground and the kids would be looking at you and saying stuff. So I thought, you know something, I'm gonna run away from school. So I decided to run away from school. And it was the best thing I ever done. Because I knew that I was gonna see more looking forward 
than what I was looking backwards. So I carried on running. And I ran, and where I used to live, there used to be a pond. And I sat down by the pond, and I started to look into the water. And I was watching all these insects swimming around the top of the water. And then I saw a, a brooch that was flying, but it was a dragonfly. And I was so amazed, I wanted to see if I could catch it. So I remember the dragonfly landed on a, on a lily, and I put my hand in like that. And I lifted up this dragonfly, and I was looking at it. It was a damselfly, which is the same family from the dra dragonfly. And I was looking at it like that. And I was fascinated, because now I'm in my world now. This is my world. So I don't have to think about school anymore. So there I was looking around, looking, looking at all the insects. And because I was trying to find something within myself, I wanted to see what I could find. Because it wasn't in education. It had to come out somewhere. I had to find something to rescue myself. So what I did, I remember seeing a beetle and I picked up the beetle like that, picked it up and I was looking at the beetle. And because my imagination was so different to everybody else's, I, I picked up this beetle and I kept thinking, the reason why the beetles are who they are, the pop, the pop group, is because it must be because these beetles can sing. So I started to sing to this beetle. I was singing, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm in the back, yeah, no, come out, I'm out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I picked up this beetle and I put it by my ear to see if I could hear him sing. And it beat me on my ears, this beetle did. And there I was. And the beetle fell on the floor and went off. So I wasn't happy, so I thought, well, perhaps I need four. So I was lifting up rocks and I picked up four beetles, caught four beetles. And I was singing to them, singing to these beetles, thinking that they would sing back. I mean, never hear nothing from them. But I was trying to find something. So what I did, I remember running and I could see my house in the distance. And I, I got to, to the, I won't keep you too long because I'm going to talk about Mr. Nello but I'm gonna just, just give you a little insight to me. So I ran towards the fence and I could see my house in the distance. I climbed over the fence and I hid in the shed. I remember hiding there, just sitting there. And I remember looking through the shed and I could see my mother in the kitchen. My mother used to work part time. And I remember my mother leaving and she left. I came out and we used to have a dog. The dog come running towards me. I was playing with the dog, playing. And the dog drilled a, dug a hole in the ground and lots of ants came out of the ground, lots and lots of ants. And I started to feel sorry for the ants. So I decided to build houses for ants. So I found my dad's razor blade and I broke off little bits of the razor blade and I started slicing up little bits of wood and I constructed and built a whole village for ants. And then I weren't satisfied. I thought I might as well make some furniture for the ants now. So I cut up little bits, splinters of wood, and pushed them together their own friction and built a whole community for ants. I built a village. I, built, I even built a palace for the queen ant. And when school had finished, next door, one of the girls next door, I remember half past three or three o'clock, one of the girls come skipping up the garden path next door, and I was hiding behind the shed, and she looked over the fence, and I remember she said, your mum's looking for you and your mum's not very happy. You see, my mum was a type of woman you don't mess with, you see. You see, if my mum hit you and it missed you, you'd catch pneumonia off the draft. Because my mother was a disciplinarian and I was a bit scared of my mum. You see, so I was a little bit scared and she was saying, and then all of a sudden she went, oh, wow, she saw what I made. And she says, did you really make that? Wow, that's really the bestest. 
And then she ran down the garden and called her mum, and her mum came out of the garden and said, your mum's looking for you, your mother's not very happy. And then she saw what I'd made, and then she, she said, that is amazing. Then she went and called her, her husband, and, and her, her sons came, the next door neighbours came, and I was all looking over the fence saying, wow, that's amazing. And then I, first time in my life I was told I was good at something. It made me feel really good. I felt like I had something. Then when my mother came home, my mother was fuming. She came up the garden with a stick. See, my mother was a type of woman, right? If she hit you, <laughs> you'd learn to Morris dance. <laughs> she wouldn't just hit you once. She'd hit you a few times. So then she saw what I'd done, and I... The lady next door said, look what your son's done. And my mum looked at it and then my mum went, took a deep breath, looked at me and said, you ran away from school. Why you run away from school for? And then she stopped again and said, where, where did you get that from? I said, I made it. And then she picked it up and she could see all the little houses. And then she, she took me in the house, put it on the table and she said one thing to me. She said, you see them little thing you make? Make them smaller and your name will get bigger. And I went on a journey from there to go smaller and smaller and smaller. And that made me realise then that I had something within myself. Every time I, I made something, I decided to go to an extreme. So I carved all the Beatrix Potter characters on a toothpick. And I showed my mum and she went, too big. So I went even smaller, and she'd say, it's still too big. So when I went to school, I started showing all the kids. And the kids started surrounding me and giving me money to have a look. They'd give me threepence, they'd give me sixpence. And then that was the beginning of me. So now my life has changed. Um, they've done a documentary on me called The World's Tiniest Masterpieces. And now they're about to do a film about my life. I'm traveling all over the world. And it's changed for me, it's opened up a new door. I felt like a diamond that was uncut, a diamond that was thrown into the bin and my mother took it out and showed me how to polish myself and know who I am now. But at the same time, I'm here to talk about an artist. And his name is Prince Nello. Now, we, we've all heard of Picasso. Picasso was influenced by African and Asian art. Now, what people don't understand is the real Picasso is standing where you live. Yeah. That's Picasso. Standing with Gregor when he was younger. <laughs> now, to me, I've seen a lot of artwork, and I rate Mr. Nello as probably the be one of the best I've ever seen because his abstract work is, is, is absolutely tremendous. He puts a lot of feeling into his work and his legacy is going to go down. And here, this is the little, this is the growth of Mr. Nello himself. Here at the Legacy Center is here to show you his artwork so you can see exactly what, how race is capable of achieving because Africa is the cradle of art. That's where it all came from. The ancient Egyptians, the ancient Egyptians, they were created, they created the pyramids and they were making sculptures that to this very day people can't explain. Now, you never hear anything about black art because it never seems to get any recognition or any publicity. I learned that I had to do something that was extreme. So because my work was so extreme, they had no choice. I had no choice but, but, but to give me the recognition. But at the same time, there's so many great black artists in the UK who don't get recognised. And Nello, to me, I would say is probably one of the best I've seen because I know when I see something great, I know 
what I'm good at. And I'm, I'm not only looking at what I do, I look at what other people can do. And Nello's work is here for all of us to see. And I think that anyone who purchases one of these pieces will have a great investment. I have one myself, and I may buy some more. Because sometimes people come along once, once, greatness comes along once. You see, if you, I saw a documentary on Picasso, and he was talking about he, his influence all came from Africa, he was influenced by African art, Asian art. But you never hear black people on TV talking about African art or Asian art. Because the media has a way of not showing us the truth. They always suppress it, hide it, and never let us know what, what we're capable of doing, which can discourage a lot of black kids out there. So they tend to go into like the musical side of things and rapping and grime. But the need to be able to see this so they can be inspired and influenced by it. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll give you a little bit about me, a little bit. Um, but also, it's not just about me, it's about Nello himself. I've overcome adversity. I'm autistic. And it's not really a problem to me anymore because I found something to rescue myself with, and that's my artwork. My work speaks for itself. And Mr. Nello's work speaks as well. And also, we have another talented artist, Norma Jean. Norma, Norma has won an award for her jewellery. And then she has a company called Silverfish Jewellery. I've also, I did commission Norma to make me a nice dragonfly, which I have. And these people should be celebrated in a big way. And I think events like this should be more frequent to bring people out so they understand that, you know, black people are capable of creating the greatest art in the world because that's where we're from. We're from our ancestors, we're from Africa and Egypt. We, we are who we are and we should be proud of who we are. And I hope I've said enough to, to, to let you understand but another thing, before I go, there's a guy called Stephen Wilshire, who's also autistic. He can look at a, a whole landscape, and I'm sure you've heard of him, and he can draw every single detail, but not even the computers can understand it. They can't work it out, they can't understand it. And this is what we're capable of doing. You know, we, we, we've got a lot of skills to bring to the world. And art is, is like a way of expressing that. And all I can say is thank you very much for listening to me. Have a look at the artwork and enjoy the artwork. And you want to talk to me, you can talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.